Hi there. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about how we can use uh, Fire and RAG together to uh, use LLMs to make uh, data in healthcare a little bit more accessible. I wanted to introduce you to Tommy. Tommy is a 14 year old who recently uh, walked into a new pediatrician's office and that pediatrician was interested in that scar on Tommy's chin. Uh, so wouldn't it be nice if he could just go in and ask a question of the data? Wants to know when the stitch, where the stitches happen, right? Wouldn't it be nice if it just came back and, and told him? How can we do that? Well, there are a couple of different ways we could do that. The first one is fine tuning. In fine tuning, what we do is we feed all the healthcare data to the model uh, and help it answer questions um, off of that data. Now, fine tuning has a couple of problems to it. One is uh, keeping the data up to date, right? Uh, healthcare data is changing all the time. And if we want to fine tune the model, we have to fine tune it all the time. And that's costly in terms of processing uh, and difficult to do. The other thing is even more importantly, privacy and security. We hear every day stories about large language models leaking their training data. And in healthcare, that's just not acceptable. We can't answer the wrong person's questions with Tommy's data. So what can we do? Well, this is where retrieval augmented generation comes in or RAG. RAG is a process where we take some curated data, uh, put it in what we call a vector store, and then we're able to uh, associate that with questions. And we're gonna step through this and understand how it works today. So first, let's understand a little bit about what embeddings are. Embeddings really are just assigning numbers to words or coordinates to words. And what we do is we start with some random numbers and then we feed in a bunch of text and we start to see where numbers are associated to each other and we push them closer and closer to each other so that those coordinates are closer and closer to each other. So this way we can take some curated data and do embedding on it. So here's a simple example where we're just looking at the top speed of some things, right? So the top speed of the bird, and then we take that, we associate it with numbers, and we can create this vector index where we have these numbers for those facts. Then we can take a question, for example, what is the fastest animal? And we can associate that with the values in the vector like this. So we take and we make a, a numeric representation of the question, and then we see what in the vector index is close to that numeric representation. And then we can bring all of that together into a question. So when we actually prompt the uh, LLM, we're prompting it with the data that's going to help it answer that question effectively. So this was a simple example here. Um, but there's some concerns when we're working with healthcare data to do the same thing. You know, those were some small facts. When we talk about healthcare data, we talk about a lot of information. So here is Tommy's healthcare record, um, all the information for him. And I'm sure that you're able to just follow that as it scrolls through here. Um, but I know that, that I can't. Um, and if we just dump all that data at the uh, LLM, it's not going to give us a very reasonable response, right? So what can we do? Well, here's where FIRE, which stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperable Resources comes in. It's the latest standard from HL7, and uh, which is an international organization that maintains standards for healthcare data. And the advantage of FIRE is that it splits the healthcare record up into lots of little individual resources. So for example, here's an observation resource for Tommy's weight at one point in time. Right. This is great. This gives us the right sort of granularity to feed to the LLM. Uh, but we have a, a problem, which is that if you remember, the embedding was all done by feeding it lots and lots of text, not lots and lots of uh, fire records. Right. So if we want good representation of that fire resource in um, text, what we need to do is create a text representation of it, which is what I've done here. So programmatically, I've taken the information out of the fire resource and created a little paragraph that describes it. So now we have those chunks in a way that we can embed them effectively. But there's still another piece that we really want to have, 
right? So if you look back at that question that we asked, not only was it able to answer where, but it also answered some additional information like what was the cost associated. If we want to do that, we really need to bring in this concept of knowledge graphs. Now, what is a knowledge graph? A knowledge graph is, in, is taking the fact that uh, fire resources are all linked together by what are called references, and it's representing those in a way. Now, let's let's go back to our to our simple example in order to understand this. Okay, so what we want to do is in a graph, we're going to create nodes and we're going to connect them with edges. In this case, in our simple example, right, we're connecting animals to their top speed and vehicles to their top speed. We can rearrange that just a little bit. So now we have a nice graph which shows us that, you know, a dog's top speed is 45 miles an hour and that they're an animal, but they're not a vehicle. Okay, so this is great. This gives us a good structure of the data. But again, we don't want to abandon our vector index. What we can do is we can then project the nodes, which we've created in our knowledge graph, into vector space. So here's the example of Tommy. Um, what I've done here is I've taken Tommy's fire data, brought it into Neo4j, and then projected it into um, vector space. And what we're looking at here is a query that's showing you the two uh, procedures that Tommy has had, which had stitches. Now, actually, those procedures are sutures, right? Uh, we asked about stitches, but the procedures themselves are called sutures. And that's where that embedding comes in, right? We took that text representation, embedded it in vector space, and their stitches and sutures are close enough to each other to get us to that procedure that we want. And remember, we also asked about the date, which lets us choose between these two procedures. But then we want to get some of the other information. That was what I was getting to, right? So what we can do is take the nodes which are connected to the procedure, because the procedure itself doesn't have any information about cost, but the claim down there will. So we take all of those nodes and we feed them to the to the LLM, which is what gives us that really rich answer that we looked at. And there's something more I want to go into. So um, if you were paying attention, which no reason necessarily would have, that Tommy, when he came in for this appointment, had a slightly high blood pressure. Now, that's, the doctor is concerned about this, and he wants to figure out what he needs to do about it. Now, it matters a lot whether this is just Tommy's first time having a high blood pressure or whether Tommy has some high blood pressures of the past, that's really going to affect how he treats Tommy. Now, if we look at, his, at Tommy's uh, record, he does have some blood pressures in the past, but all of them are long in the past. Uh, they're too far back to really make a big difference. However, if we look a little bit further at Tommy's uh, record, we see what are called document references. And document references are doctor's notes for visits that Tommy's had recently, and they're all base 64 encoded here, but I've decoded them for you. And if we look at these doctor notes, we do see that Tommy has had some blood pressure readings re very recently. So what we can do with the power of John Snow Labs, Spark NLP for Healthcare, is we can go through and we can identify those blood pressures, right? Then we can bring those blood pressures out, create fire resources for them, and bring them into the graph. So now we have all the blood pressure readings for Tommy. So that's great. Now we can start to answer questions, but there's one more thing before we can do that. Most of the time, uh, when we do RAG, we base it on what's called the nearest neighbors. Um, so we say, we want say two nearest neighbors. Uh, so we're gonna find uh, the thing that most closely matches our query and then we're going to keep going and we're going to collect two or five or whatever fixed number of nearest neighbors we want. In healthcare, this doesn't work out really well. Um, in healthcare, the number of neighbors that we might want is very variable. For example, in this case, it's nine blood pressures um, or, uh, or it could be 14 blood pressures, depending on how many visits Tommy's had recently and so on and so forth, right? 
So what I'm proposing to do is use the standard deviation instead. So we get a bunch of nearest neighbors, maybe a thousand, and we calculate the standard deviation. And then I take one standard deviation from the top, and that gives me what I'm gonna to feed to the LLM, which is the nine observations that are those blood pressures. So now we can go and we can ask the RAG for those blood pressure readings. And you see that it returns all nine of the ones that we're interested in, as opposed to just two of them or 15 of them. Cool. So now I think we've done some really interesting things with RAG, right? Um, we've talked a little bit about what is RAG. We've talked about how FHIR can help us chunk the data out appropriately. And if we create a text representation of that and bring it into a vector store, it can really help us. We talked a little bit about knowledge graphs, how they help also to associate the data. We've talked about how we can use NLP to get even more rich data. And we've talked about how we can use standard deviation uh, as opposed to nearest neighbor to get the kind of results that we want in healthcare to answer really interesting questions like these ones. So in a moment, I'm gonna take questions from you, but if after this talk, you wanna reach out to me, this is this QR code or that link below it, um, will get you my information, including my YouTube uh, channel and links to various medium articles where I've gone over some of this information. Uh, and uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. But right now, how about we take some questions?